All right, so we're diving into parallel computing today and how it's impacting AI. Um, I've got some fascinating articles and research you sent over, and mm -hmm. I'm really excited to unpack this with you. Yeah, happy to be here. Should be fun. Yeah, for sure. I was actually thinking about this earlier. You know, it seems like traditional computing, it's kind of like when you try to solve a massive jigsaw puzzle, but you're doing it one piece at a time. Uh -huh. It gets there eventually, but it's slow, you know, right. and it can be pretty limiting. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And just like that puzzle analogy, traditional computers kind of hit a wall when you start thinking about all the demands of AI, right. which needs massive data sets and some pretty intricate algorithms. And that's where parallel computing steps in. Okay. It's like having a whole team working on that puzzle all at the same time. Oh, I like that. So instead of one computer, you know, uh, slogging away at the whole problem. We've got multiple processors all working together, all right. dividing and conquering all those complex tasks. So I think most of our listeners are familiar with the basic idea, yeah. but can we dig a little deeper into what that actually looks like in practice? Absolutely. So there are a few different, you know, flavors of parallel computing, Okay. each with its own sort of approach. We have data parallelism, which is where you have the same task, okay. but it's being performed on different chunks of data simultaneously. Okay. Think of it like um, a team of researchers. Each one's analyzing a different set of data from patients. Got it. Trying to identify patterns, maybe in a clinical trial or something. So it's all about distributing that workload yeah. across multiple processors, letting them crunch those numbers way faster. Right, right, exactly, exactly. Okay, what about task parallelism? How is that different? So task parallelism is more about dividing a problem into different tasks that can be done uh, concurrently. Mm -hmm. So imagine you've got like a team of animators working on a film. Okay. One might be focused on like character modeling. Right. Another one's working on lighting. Another one's doing the special effects. Gotcha. Each one has a separate task, but they're all contributing to the same final product. So it's like having specialized teams working in parallel, yes. each bringing their expertise to the table. Exactly. And then we've got pipeline parallelism, which I imagine is kind of like an assembly line, right? You got it. So in pipeline parallelism, each processor handles a specific stage okay. of a sequential task. Yeah. So it's like um, a car manufacturing plant huh? where different parts of the car are assembled in parallel, yeah. moving down the line uh -huh. until you have the final product. This is all starting to make sense. So we've got these different types, data, task, and pipeline parallelism right. all working together to really supercharge AI. So can you tell us why parallel computing is so crucial yeah. for AI specifically? Yeah, so AI, as you know, it's incredibly data hungry uh -huh. and computationally intensive. Right. Whether it's training these deep neural networks, making oh. real-time predictions, or learning through trial and error. Yeah. Parallel computing is what makes all those processes faster and more efficient. So let's break down how this actually works in practice then. First, let's look at training those deep neural networks. Yeah, the no. brains behind AI, essentially. They're powerful. Yes. But I imagine training them requires a ton of data and processing power. Oh, absolutely. I mean, just imagine training an AI to recognize like different dog breeds. Okay. It needs to analyze thousands, maybe even millions mm. of images yeah. just to learn the little differences between say a golden retriever and a Labrador. Oh, wow. And that's exactly where parallel computing comes in. Oh, okay. Yeah. So instead of one processor slowly going through each image one by one, right. we can distribute those images across multiple processors yeah. and they can all learn from the data at the same time. Right exactly. Then. So with data parallelism, yeah. each processor would get a portion of those dog images uh -huh. and they all learn in parallel, cool. which speeds things up dramatically. That's amazing. It's like having a whole team of trainers working with the AI at the same time. So its learning curve just skyrockets. But what about those really complex neural networks? Right. The ones that are just way too big for a single processor to handle. Yeah, so for those, we use something called model parallelism. Okay. And basically, we can actually split the neural network itself across multiple processors. Oh, wow. So they can work on different parts of the model at the same time. I see. This allows us to train and use much larger and more complex models than we could ever do with traditional computing. So it's not just speeding up the training. It's allowing us to create more powerful and sophisticated AI models. Exactly. That's incredible. Now let's move on to real-time inference. This sounds like an area where speed is absolutely crucial. Oh, yeah, absolutely. 
it's all about making predictions in an instant, right? Like when your phone recognizes your face right. or a self-driving car needs to make a split-second decision. Exactly. Those are great examples. Yeah, I can see how milliseconds would really matter in those situations. For sure. So how does parallel computing help with that? Well, one technique we use is batch processing. Okay. So instead of analyzing one face right, or yeah. one sensor input at a time, yeah. we can group similar tasks together and process them all at once. Gotcha. This really cuts down on the overall processing time, uh -huh. allowing for those real-time responses. So it's like streamlining the workflow, yeah. handling things in bulk rather than one by one. That's a good way to put it. And I imagine this is where edge computing comes into play too, right? Exactly. Edge computing brings parallel processing power directly to the devices themselves. Oh, okay. So instead of relying on a central server or the cloud for all the heavy lifting, right. we can offload some of those tasks to the device itself. I see which makes everything more responsive and efficient. So whether it's a self-driving car navigating uh -huh. or a smartphone understanding voice commands, right. those devices are becoming more and more capable of yeah. handling all these complex AI tasks on their own thanks to parallel computing. That's amazing. Now, what about reinforcement learning? How does parallel computing help AI learn through trial and error? So. Think about training an AI to play a complex video game. Okay. With parallel computing, we can create multiple instances of that game. Oh, wow. Running simultaneously. So interesting. This allows the AI to explore different strategies and learn much faster uh -huh. than if it were playing just one game at a time. So it's like giving the AI the ability to play against itself in yeah. multiple parallel universes, basically. Yeah, you could think of it that way. So it can just rapidly gain experience and refine its skills. That's a great way to put it. This is definitely an area where the more processing power, the better, it seems. Absolutely, yeah. And this involves techniques like parallel simulations. Okay. Where you have multiple game environments running at once. I see. And distributed training, where the learning process itself is split across multiple processors. Gotcha. This lets us explore a much wider range of possibilities and find solutions more efficiently. So we've seen how parallel computing is really woven into so many aspects of AI. Right. From training those complex neural networks to enabling real-time decision-making. Now let's shift gears a bit and talk about some of the real-world applications of this dynamic duo. I know healthcare is a big one. Absolutely. I mean, there are incredible advancements happening in medical image analysis. Yeah. Using AI to analyze like CT scans or MRIs. Oh, that's amazing. To detect things that maybe the human eye would miss. Uh-huh. That sounds like life-saving technology. It really is. So how does parallel computing play a role in all of that? Well, by using parallel computing, we can analyze those huge medical images right. much faster and more efficiently. Okay. This means quicker diagnoses, faster treatment decisions, mm -hmm. and ultimately better outcomes for patients. It's amazing to think that parallel computing is literally helping to save lives. It really is. And I know genomics research is another area where this technology is having a huge impact. Absolutely. Yeah. Cracking the code of DNA, as you can imagine, involves processing massive amounts of data. Right. And parallel computing makes this analysis significantly faster and more comprehensive. Okay. This is opening doors for personalized medicine. Wow. Allowing us to tailor treatments to individual patients based on their unique genetic makeup. It's truly revolutionary. We're moving from a one-size-fits-all approach to healthcare right. to a more personalized and targeted approach, mm -hmm. all thanks to the power of parallel computing. And it's not just healthcare that's benefiting from this technology, is it? What other industries are we seeing this dynamic duo making waves in? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, the finance world, for example, they've embraced parallel computing sure. to handle the sheer volume of data and the speed needed for things like algorithmic trading. Right. To stay competitive, they need to analyze market data and execute trades incredibly fast. Yeah. And that's only possible with parallel processing. So we're talking about computers making those split second trading decisions, yeah, was... potentially leading to huge gains or losses. Right. It's high stakes. Wow. It sounds like a high speed, high stakes game. It is. Definitely. What about managing the inherent risks in that kind of environment? Yeah, so risk management is another area where parallel computing is really valuable. Okay. By crunching tons of data. Yeah. Financial institutions can assess potential dangers more accurately uh -huh. and make more informed decisions to try and reduce those risks. And again, speed is key here to keep pace with the markets. It sounds like parallel computing is helping those institutions navigate those sometimes turbulent financial waters. Yeah 
making them more agile and responsive in a world where every second counts. Exactly. What other industries are leveraging this technology? Well, autonomous systems are a great example. Okay. Self-driving cars, for instance, rely heavily on parallel computing mm. to process all the information from their sensors in real time, Yeah. allowing them to make those critical navigational decisions safely. Yeah. They need to constantly analyze data from cameras, radar, LIDAR wow. to understand their surroundings. And that takes a lot of processing power. It's amazing to think those self-driving cars are making hundreds of calculations per second. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. All thanks to the power of parallel computing working behind the scenes. I imagine drones must depend on similar technology. Oh, absolutely. For their autonomous operations. Yeah. Whether it's for delivery, surveillance, or exploration, uh, AI-powered drones use parallel computing to process visual data and make real-time decisions okay. that enable them to navigate and perform their tasks autonomously. So they're basically flying supercomputer. Pretty much, yeah. Capable of processing huge amounts of information right. to understand their environment and make decisions on the fly. Exactly. It's incredible how far we've come with these AI-powered autonomous systems. Yeah. And it's clear that parallel computing is at the heart of those advancements. Now, I'm curious about how this technology is impacting natural language processing. I'm fascinated by how AI is becoming so good at understanding yeah. and even generating human language. It's amazing, isn't it? It really is. Parallel computing is playing a huge role there as well. Okay. Think about those real-time translation apps uh -huh. that seem to magically break down language barriers. Right. They rely heavily on parallel processing to power those sophisticated algorithms. I see. It's not just translating individual words. Yeah. It's about understanding the nuances of grammar, context, and even cultural references right. to provide accurate and meaningful translations. It's incredible how seamless those apps can translate languages now, yeah. making communication across cultures so much easier. It really is a game changer. It is. Yeah. And it's all thanks to the behind the scenes magic of parallel computing. Absolutely. What other language related tasks are benefiting from this technology? Well, sentiment analysis is a great example. Imagine trying to understand how people feel about a product or a topic based on what they're saying online. Mm -hmm. Parallel computing lets us analyze vast amounts of text data okay. from social media, reviews, articles, right. to get valuable insights into public opinion or customer feedback. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so businesses can use it to gauge customer reactions. Gotcha. Political campaigns can monitor public sentiment, mm -hmm. and researchers can analyze trends in, like, social discourse. It sounds like parallel computing is giving us a superpower when it comes to understanding human language. In a way, yeah. From translating languages to gauging public sentiment. This technology is really revolutionizing how we interact with language and information. It is. As we explore all this potential of parallel computing and AI, it feels like we're just scratching the surface of what's possible. Yeah, definitely. But as with any major advancement, there are always challenges to overcome, right? Of course, yeah. Designing, programming, and managing parallel systems, it's inherently complex. You know, it requires specialized expertise to make sure all those processors are working together smoothly. Uh -huh. And as the problem gets bigger, so does the complexity of the solution. So it's not as simple as just throwing more processors at a problem and hoping yeah. for the best. Exactly. It takes careful planning and specialized knowledge to create those really efficient parallel systems. Yeah. And that brings us to the challenge of scalability. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. As we add more processors into the mix, yeah. making sure they all work together efficiently becomes increasingly difficult. Okay. You know, we have to think about things like communication, overhead, right. data synchronization, uh -huh. and load balancing. Gotcha. All of these can actually slow down the performance of the system. It makes sense. It's like trying to conduct an orchestra. Yeah. The more musicians you have, the more challenging it is to keep everyone in sync. That's a great analogy. And playing in harmony. It really is. And then there's the challenge of resource management, too. Right. We need to keep track of all those processors. Yes. Make sure they're being used effectively uh, and prevent any bottlenecks or wasted resources. Exactly. So it's this delicate balancing act. Yes. Optimizing performance while making sure we're not overworking some processors and leaving others idle. Yeah. It sounds like parallel computing requires a whole new level of computational choreography. It, it does. It does. But, you know, despite these challenges, yeah, the future of parallel computing in AI is incredibly bright. 
Okay. Researchers are making breakthroughs all the time. That's great. Pushing the boundaries of what's possible with new architectures and approaches. That's what I love about this field. Yeah. It's always evolving, always pushing the limits. Absolutely. So what are some of those exciting breakthroughs on the horizon that you're most excited about? Well, one that I find particularly fascinating is quantum computing. Oh, wow. Imagine a computer that can be in multiple states at the same time. Mm -hmm. This would allow for a level of parallel processing power that just dwarfs anything possible with classical computers. It sounds almost like science fiction. It does, doesn't it? How close are we to actually seeing quantum computing used for AI in practical applications? It's still early days, yeah. but the potential is enormous. Yeah. Quantum computers could completely revolutionize AI, uh -huh. allowing us to tackle problems that are simply impossible for classical computers to handle. So what kinds of things are we talking about? Well, imagine training massive neural networks in a fraction of the time. Wow. Or simulating complex systems with incredible accuracy. That's amazing. Like, for example, in drug discovery. Okay. Quantum computers could simulate the interactions of molecules at the atomic level. <sighs> this could lead to the development of new life-saving medications. It's mind-boggling to think about the possibilities. It really is. What other advancements are on the horizon that have you excited? Another area that's generating a lot of buzz is neuromorphic computing. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've heard a little about this. Yeah, so this approach takes inspiration from the human brain. Okay. Aiming to build computers that are structured and function more like our own neural networks. So instead of trying to force AI into the mold of traditional computing, exactly. we're looking at the most complex and efficient information processor we know of. Right, the human brain. The human brain. It's such a fascinating concept. It is. What's the driving force behind this approach? The goal is to create AI systems that are more efficient, okay. adaptable, yeah. and capable of learning and solving problems more like how humans do it. Uh -huh. By mimicking the brain's interconnected neurons and synapses, right. we hope to achieve a level of cognitive flexibility and efficiency that's tough to get with traditional computer architectures. So it's like we're trying to reverse engineer the brain's processing power. Yeah, in a way. Harnessing its efficiency and adaptability for AI. Exactly. What are the potential benefits of this for real-world applications? Well, imagine robots that can learn and adapt to new environments as easily as humans can. Okay. Or AI systems that can understand and respond to natural language with the same nuance and comprehension as a person. Wow. Neuromorphic computing could lead to breakthroughs in robotics, personalized medicine, mm -hmm. and even creative fields like art and music. That's incredible. We're not just trying to create faster computers. Uh -huh. We're trying to create computers that think more like us. Exactly. And speaking of pushing those boundaries, how is edge computing evolving to take advantage of all these advancements? So edge computing is all about bringing the power of AI closer to where it's needed. Okay. Whether that's on our smartphones, in our cars, or even embedded in the infrastructure of our cities. Right. And it's advancing quickly as we develop more powerful and efficient processors uh -huh. that can handle those complex AI tasks locally. So instead of always relying on a central server or the cloud, right. these devices are becoming more and more capable of handling those complex tasks on their own. Thanks to all the advancements in parallel computing, yeah. what are some of the implications of this shift toward edge computing? Well, for one thing, it means faster and more responsive AI applications. Okay. Imagine a self-driving car that can make split-second decisions without needing to constantly communicate with the cloud. Right. Or a smartphone that can do complex image recognition in real time yeah. without draining your battery. That makes sense. This localized processing power makes AI more accessible and efficient for a wider range of applications. That's a great point. It's like having a mini supercomputer in your pocket. Yeah always ready to assist you. And I imagine this also has implications for data privacy and security. Absolutely. By processing data locally, yeah. we can reduce the amount of sensitive information that needs to be sent to the cloud, right. making our AI applications more secure and protecting our privacy. This is especially important in areas like healthcare, yes. where patient data needs to be handled with the utmost care and confidentiality. Yeah. It sounds like edge computing is bringing the power of AI closer to us. It is. Making it more accessible, more responsive, mm. and more secure. For sure. It's an exciting development to watch as we see how it shapes the future of AI in our everyday lives. It really is. So taking a step back and considering everything we've talked about, yeah. what's the key takeaway from all of this? 
I think the main takeaway is that parallel computing is the engine driving this AI revolution. Okay. It's completely changing how we approach challenges in healthcare, finance, transportation, mm -hmm. so many other fields. It feels like parallel computing is propelling us forward at an incredible pace. It is. It really is. It's transforming how we approach these challenges. Yes. We've come a long way from those early days of computing, haven't we? Yeah, we have. It's like we've gone from trying to solve that massive jigsaw puzzle one piece at a time right. to having a whole team of incredibly skilled puzzle masters working together, yeah. finding solutions faster than we ever thought possible. It's amazing. But as we unlock these incredible capabilities, yeah. it's important to think about the bigger picture. Uh -huh. What kind of future are we shaping with parallel computing and AI? That's a really important question. It is. As with any powerful technology, right. there's a responsibility to use it wisely and ethically. Right. We have to consider the potential impact on society, mm -hmm. the workforce, uh -huh. even our understanding of what it means to be human. Yeah. It's a conversation that needs to happen alongside these technological advancements. It's like we're not just building new tools, we're building a new world. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. And as the architects of that world, we have a responsibility to think about the kind of society we want to create. Absolutely. We've talked about some amazing possibilities. We have. Personalized medicine, self-driving cars. Yeah. But what are some of the potential challenges we need to be mindful of as we go further into this uncharted territory? Well, one of the biggest challenges will be ensuring that these technologies are used for good and that they don't worsen the existing inequalities. Right. We need to be aware of potential biases in the data used to train AI systems mm -hmm. and really strive for fairness and transparency in how these technologies are developed and used. That's crucial. We've already seen examples where AI systems have reflected biases yeah, present in the data they were trained on. It's true. Leading to unfair or discriminatory outcomes. Right. It's a reminder that we need to be careful and proactive in addressing these issues as we move forward. Absolutely. What other areas do we need to proceed with caution in? Another challenge is the potential impact on the workforce. Okay. As AI and automation get more sophisticated, Yeah. There's a concern that some jobs could become obsolete, right. leading to job displacement and economic disruption. That's a valid concern. It is. And it's essential to have thoughtful conversations about how we prepare for these changes uh -huh. and make sure people have the skills and support they need to adapt yeah. and thrive in this new landscape. So it's about finding that balance, right? Exactly. Embracing the potential of AI while also ensuring it benefits everyone, yeah, not just a select few. That's the goal. And as these AI systems become more complex and their decision-making capabilities grow, uh -huh. how do we ensure those decisions align with our values and ethics? It's a big question. It is, yeah. And no easy answers. You're right. As AI evolves, yeah. we need to develop frameworks and guidelines right. for responsible development and ah. use transparency, accountability, and human oversight will be essential right. to make sure these technologies are used ethically yeah. and for the benefit of society. This has been an incredible journey, this deep dive. It has. We've been. explored different types of parallel computing, Dang. delved into its impact on AI, uh -huh. and uncovered some exciting possibilities and challenges for the future. It's been fascinating. It really has. It's such a complex and rapidly evolving field. It is. But one thing's for sure. Parallel computing is shaping the future of AI in profound ways. I agree. As we wrap up, is there a final thought you'd like to leave our listeners with? I think as we continue to unlock the potential of parallel computing mm. and AI, yeah. we need to remember that these are tools uh -huh. that can be used to solve some of humanity's greatest challenges. Right. Let's Don't... use them wisely, ethically, <laughs> yeah. and for the good of society. That's a great note to end on. To our listeners, I encourage you to stay curious, keep exploring, yes. and be part of the conversation about how we shape the future of AI. It's important. It is. It's a journey that's just beginning, and it's one we're all taking together. Absolutely. Until next time, keep those minds engaged, and we'll see you on our next deep dive. See you then? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, finance is a big one. They've really jumped on parallel computing. Makes sense. Yeah. Got to handle all that data, you know, well, especially with the speed they need for things like algorithmic trading. Oh, yeah, those algorithms. It's all about staying competitive. Analyzing market data, executing trades super fast. Got to be quick. You got it. Mm. And that's only possible with parallel processing. 
So we're talking computers making those split second trading decisions. Pretty much, yeah. Leading to oh, potentially wow. huge wins or losses. High stakes for sure. Yeah, wow. High stakes, high speed. What about managing the risks involved in that kind of environment? Well, that's where risk management comes in. Mm -hmm. And parallel computing is a game changer there too. Okay. It lets financial institutions crunch tons of data uh -huh. so they can assess those potential dangers way more accurately. Got it. Make smarter decisions to reduce those risks. And all of this has to happen fast to keep up with the markets, right? Exactly. Speed is key. So it sounds like parallel computing is like their secret weapon. You could say that. Helping them navigate those crazy financial waters. Yeah, helps them be more agile, more responsive. Gotta be. In a world where every second counts. Absolutely. What other industries are using this tech in cool ways? Autonomous systems are a great example. Yeah. Okay, yeah, like self-driving cars. Exactly. They rely heavily on parallel computing. I can imagine. Yeah, all that data from their sensors in real time. Wow. It's critical for making safe navigational decisions. So they're constantly analyzing data from cameras, radar, all that stuff. All of it, yeah. Cameras, radar, LIDAR. To get a full picture of their surroundings. Right. And that requires serious processing power. It's wild to think they're making hundreds of calculations every second. Yeah, it's pretty mind-blowing. All thanks to parallel computing working behind the scenes. It's the engine that makes it all possible. And drones probably rely on similar technology, right, for their autonomous flights. Oh, absolutely. Whether they're delivering packages, doing surveillance, or exploring. Uh -huh. Those AI-powered drones use parallel computing to make sense of all the visual data. Makes sense. It's what allows them to make decisions on the fly and navigate autonomously. So they're basically flying supercomputers. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Processing tons of information to understand their environment and make those split-second decisions. Wow. We've come a long way with these AI-powered autonomous systems. We have. It's incredible. And parallel computing is right at the heart of it all. Definitely a driving force. Yeah. Now, switching gears a bit, I'm really curious about how this technology is impacting natural language processing. Oh, yeah. That's a fascinating area. It is. It's amazing how AI is becoming so adept at understanding and even generating human language. It's pretty remarkable, the progress we've made. It really is. So where does parallel computing fit into all of this? It's a key player, for sure. Think about those real-time translation apps. The ones that seem to magically break down language barriers. Exactly. Those rely heavily on parallel processing to power their algorithms. Okay, so it's more than just word-for-word -word translation. Uh, yeah, much more. It's about understanding the nuances of grammar, context, even cultural references. And make sure those translations are accurate and make sense. Right. It's about conveying the meaning, not just the words themselves. It's amazing how seamless those apps are now. It's really impressive how far they've come. It makes communication across different languages so much easier. It really does. It's a game changer. And it's all happening thanks to parallel computing working its magic in the background? Behind the scenes, but essential. What other language-related tasks are we seeing benefit from this technology? Sentiment analysis is a good example. Okay, what is that exactly? It's about trying to figure out how people feel about something based on what they're saying online. Like product reviews or social media posts. Exactly. Parallel computing allows us to analyze massive amounts of text data. Got it. To get a sense of public opinion or customer feedback. So businesses can use this to see how people are reacting to their products? That's right. And political campaigns can track public sentiment. Uh -huh. Researchers can analyze trends in social discourse. So parallel computing is basically giving us a superpower. In a way, yeah. When it comes to understanding all the nuances of human language... Definitely gives us a deeper understanding. From translating languages to gauging public sentiment, it's revolutionizing how we interact with language and information. It's reshaping the landscape, that's for sure. And as we explore all this potential of parallel computing and AI, it feels like we're just scratching the surface. Oh, we are. There's so much more to come. But like with any major advancement, there are always challenges, right? Yeah. Of course, there always are. Designing, programming, and managing these parallel systems, it's complex stuff. Right. Takes a certain level of expertise. It does. You need to make sure all those processors are working together smoothly. Like a well-oiled machine. Exactly. And as the problems we're trying to solve get bigger, mm -hmm. the solutions get more complex too. So it's not as simple as just throwing more processors at uh, it? Nope, not at all. And hoping for the best. You need a strategy, careful planning, the right knowledge. To build those truly efficient parallel systems. That's the key.
And that brings us to the challenge of scalability, right? Exactly. As you add more and more processors, yeah. it gets harder to keep them all working together efficiently. Like herding cats, I imagine. Uh -huh. Something like that. Hmm. You got to think about communication overhead, making sure data is synced up, right, and balancing the workloads so no one processor gets overloaded. Otherwise, the whole system could slow down. Exactly. It's all connected. It's like conducting an orchestra. Perfect analogy. The more musicians you have, the harder it is to keep everyone in sync. You need a skilled conductor. And then we have resource management to think about, too. Oh, right. Another crucial piece. Keeping track of all those processors, mm -hmm. making sure they're being used effectively. And not wasting any resources. So it's a delicate balancing act. It is. You're juggling a lot of factors. Optimizing performance, but also making sure no processor gets overworked while others sit idle. It's a fine line. It sounds like parallel computing requires a whole new level of computational choreography. You could say that. But despite all these challenges, yeah. the future of parallel computing and AI is super exciting. That's good to hear. Yeah, researchers are making breakthroughs all the time. Always pushing the boundaries. Always. New architectures, new approaches. It's constantly evolving. That's what I love about this field. So what are some of those breakthroughs on the horizon that you're most excited about? Well, quantum computing is a big one. Oh, yeah. That's the one that seems almost like science fiction. It does, doesn't it? Imagine a computer that can be in multiple states at once. Eh, it's hard to even wrap my head around that. I know. It's mind-blowing. Yeah. But that's the power of quantum computing. So how close are we to actually using this for AI in practical applications? It's still early, but the potential is huge. Okay. But it's something that's actually being worked on. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Quantum computers could completely change the game for AI. What ways? Well, for one, imagine training massive neural networks in a fraction of the time it takes now. Wow, that would be incredible. Uh -oh. It would. Or think about simulating complex systems with unheard of accuracy. Like what kind of systems? Well, in drug discovery, for example, quantum computers could simulate how molecules interact at the atomic level. Wow, that's getting into some serious detail. It is. And that could lead to the development of new life-saving medications. The possibilities are pretty mind-boggling. They really are. It's an exciting time to be working in this field. I can imagine. What other advancements are you keeping an eye on? Neuromorphic computing is another one that's generating a lot of buzz. Okay, I've heard that term before, but I'm not totally sure what it means. Basically, it's about taking inspiration from the human brain okay. to build computers that are structured and function more like our own neural networks. So instead of forcing AI into the mold of traditional computing, exactly, we're looking to the most complex and efficient information processor we know of. The human brain. The human brain. That's a pretty bold approach. It is, but it's a fascinating one. The goal is to create AI systems that are more efficient, more adaptable. Uh huh. And that can learn and solve problems more like we do. By mimicking the brain's connections and synapses. Right. We're hoping to achieve a level of cognitive flexibility and efficiency that's hard to get with traditional computers. So it's like reverse engineering the brain's processing power. Yeah, kind of. Harnessing its strengths for AI. What could this mean for real-world applications? Well, imagine robots that can learn and adapt to new environments as easily as humans do. That would be incredible. It would. Or AI systems that can truly understand and respond to natural language. Like having a real conversation with a machine. Exactly. Neuromorphic computing could lead to breakthroughs in robotics, personalized medicine, even creative fields like art and music. It's amazing to think we're not just trying to create faster computers, but computers that think more like us. It's a whole new paradigm. And speaking of pushing those boundaries, Ooh. how is edge computing evolving to take advantage of all these advancements? Well, edge computing is all about bringing the power of AI closer to where it's needed. Okay, so not just relying on the cloud. Right, whether it's on our phones, in our cars, or embedded in our cities. So those devices can handle more complex AI tasks on their own. Exactly. And it's evolving rapidly as we develop more powerful and efficient processors. That can handle those tasks locally. Right. So in Instead of relying on a central server or the cloud, uh -huh. those devices can process information and make decisions right then and there. So what are the implications of this shift toward more edge computing? Well, for one, it means faster and more responsive AI applications. Okay, I could see that. Think of a self-driving car that can make split-second decisions without needing to constantly talk to the cloud. Right, that makes sense. Or a smartphone that can do complex image recognition in real time without killing your battery. That's a huge advantage. It is. 
This localized processing power makes AI more accessible and efficient for a wider range of uses. It's like having a mini supercomputer in your pocket. Exactly. Always ready to go. And it also has implications for data privacy and security. Oh, right, because the data is being processed locally. Exactly. We can reduce the amount of sensitive information that needs to be sent to the cloud. Keeping things more secure. Right, making those AI applications safer and protecting our privacy. That's especially crucial in areas like healthcare, where data privacy is paramount. Absolutely. Patient data needs to be handled with the utmost care. No doubt about it. It sounds like edge computing is bringing the power of AI closer to us. It is, in a very real way. Making it more accessible, more responsive, and more secure. Those are some of the key benefits. It's really fascinating to see how this is all unfolding and shaping the future of AI in our daily lives. It's an exciting time for sure. Mm. Lots of potential. So taking a step back, looking at everything we've talked about, yeah. what's the key takeaway from all of this? It feels like parallel computing is the driving force behind this whole AI revolution, pushing us forward at an incredible pace. It really is. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's allowed us to tackle problems that were once considered impossible and as the technology keeps evolving, we can expect even bigger breakthroughs down the line. Yeah, it's an exciting time to be in this field, that's for sure. Absolutely. We've come such a long way from those early days of computing. It's like we've gone from trying to solve that puzzle one piece at a time to having a whole team of expert puzzle solvers. Right. Working together, finding solutions faster than we could ever imagined. Yeah, it's amazing to see. But as we unlock all these incredible capabilities, we also need to think about the bigger implications. What kind of future are we creating with parallel computing and AI? That's the key question, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Like with any powerful technology, we have a responsibility to use it wisely and ethically. Right. We need to consider how it might impact society, the workforce, yeah. even our understanding of what it means to be human. Yeah, it's a conversation that needs to happen alongside all these technological advancements. Absolutely. We're not just building new tools, we're building a new world. That's a great way to put it. And as the architects of this new world, it's on us to think about what kind of society we want to create. I... We've talked about all these amazing possibilities, personalized medicine, self-driving cars. Yeah. But what are some potential challenges we need to watch out for? Or as we venture further into this uncharted territory? Well, one of the biggest challenges will be making sure these technologies are used for good. Okay. And that they don't end up making existing inequalities even worse. Right. We need to be aware of potential biases in the data used to train AI. Uh -huh. And really push for fairness and transparency in how these technologies are developed and used. Yeah, we've already seen cases where AI systems have reflected those biases. It's true, unfortunately. In the data they were trained on, yeah. leading to unfair or even discriminatory outcomes. Right, which is a big problem. It definitely is. It's a reminder that we need to be vigilant and proactive in addressing these issues as we move forward. Absolutely. We can't just ignore them. What other areas do we need to be cautious about? Another big one is the potential impact on jobs and the workforce Okay. as AI and automation become more sophisticated. There's a real concern that certain jobs could become obsolete. Yeah, people are worried about that. And it's a valid concern. It could lead to job displacement and economic disruption. It could. So we need to have some serious conversations about how to prepare for these changes mm -hmm. and make sure people have the skills and support they need to adapt and thrive in this new world. So it's all about finding that balance, isn't it? Exactly. Embracing the potential of AI, but making sure it benefits everyone. That's the key. Not just a select few. Everyone should benefit. And as AI systems become more complex and they're making more and more decisions, yeah. how do we ensure those decisions are aligned with our values and ethics? It's a huge question. It is. It's a big one. With no easy answer. No, not at all. As AI keeps evolving, yeah. we need to come up with frameworks and guidelines for responsible development and use. I see. Things like transparency, accountability, and human oversight are going to be essential. Makes sense. We need to make sure these technologies are being used ethically and that they're truly benefiting society. It's an ongoing conversation. It is. That needs input from experts in lots of different fields. Definitely. Computer science, ethics, law, social sciences. We need everyone at the table. This deep dive has been quite a journey. 
It has. We've explored all these different types of parallel computing. We have. Seen how it's impacting AI. Well, uncovered some amazing possibilities and some challenges that lie ahead. It's been fascinating to explore it all. It really has. It's such a complex and rapidly changing field. It is always evolving. But one thing's for sure, parallel computing is shaping the future of AI in some really profound ways. I completely agree. It's been a great conversation. It has. And I hope it sparked some curiosity in our listeners. Me too. And maybe inspired them to learn even more about this field. Absolutely. There's so much more to discover. There is. And the future of AI is being written right now. We've covered so much ground. We have. From the basics of breaking down those tasks to quantum computers and neuromorphic computing. It's mind-blowing to think about how far we've come. It really is. And where we might go from here. The possibilities are endless. So as we wrap up, is there a final thought you want to leave our listeners with? Yeah, I think as we continue to unlock this incredible potential of parallel computing and AI, uh -huh. we need to remember that these are tools okay. that we can use to solve some of humanity's greatest challenges. Powerful tools. They are. Let's use them wisely, ethically, and for the good of everyone. That's a perfect note to end on. To our listeners, stay curious, keep exploring, and be part of the conversation about how we shape the future of AI. It's a journey we're all on together. It is. It's just beginning, and we're all in this together. Until next time, keep those minds engaged, and we'll see you on our next deep dive. See you then.